Hello my dear students, welcome to Baiju's exam prep. In this particular video of daily dose, we'll be talking about a very interesting concept in the engineering mechanics topic that many students do have difficulty to understand. That is the virtual work method, right? I'll be explaining you the application of that and I'll be telling you how you need to apply into different applications. So my question is where we are applying the concept of virtual work, right? So if you see this image, let us suppose you might have seen this in uh, airports where we are uh, shifting the materials, we are shifting the luggages into the airplane, right? We are having this kind of uh, uh, equipment, right? Let us suppose at this point of time, it is stagnant, it is stationary. So can we say this is nothing but an equilibrium, static equilibrium? Yes, this is nothing but a static equilibrium. Okay, so if I want to calculate what is the reaction forces, or what amount of force is there is present in this particular line. So what you do, you go with a simple approach that is total summation of horizontal force equal to zero, total summation of vertical force equal to zero, total summation of momentum equal to zero, right? Total sum of moment is equal to zero. So basically, if you try to apply at each and every joint, so it will be taking minimum like 10 to 15 minutes practically or more than that. Because you will be framing different equations and ultimately you will be landing with a very long formulation, very difficult to calculate. Let me tell you an easy method. By this method, you will be able to analyze a static equilibrium conditions in just four to five lines. That's it. In just in, in fraction of seconds and in just one minute, you will be able to solve this much complicated problems by using this very beautiful method that is virtual work method or principle of virtual work or simply we can call it as virtual work principle right so for understanding this virtual work principle let us try to understand a very simple aspect if i say if a body is in static equilibrium if a body is in static equilibrium then what's the meaning of that the body will be at rest the body will be right the body is not changing its position that simply means that the total summation of force is equal to zero Right. Or can we say if let us suppose if the force is acting at multiple points, so the displacement made that um, the displacement made that point due to that force will be zero. Right. If I say let us suppose there is a at point there's a force F1 acting and there's one more point where there is F acting in opposite direction. Right. So due to this force, what is the displacement? That will be zero. Or due to this force, what is the displacement? That is zero. So basically in static equilibrium, the body is always at rest right okay so what will be the work done if there is no displacement technically we can say work done is also equal to zero okay fine but in case of virtual work done or virtual work or principle of virtual work what we do we try to have an hypothetical or a virtual displacement that is being uh, displaced by a point due to the application of that force and due to that displace virtual displacement we'll be having some virtual work so what we do, we calculate the virtual displacement at each and every point where the force is being applied and the total summation of individual work done will always be zero. That means the algebraic sum of all the virtual work at different points where the force is acting will always be equal to zero because actually this point is not moving, right? So to have more clarity, let us suppose there is a box which is kept on a horizontal surface, similar to like this, okay? So if a box is being kept, can we technically say there will be a, a weight acting downward. There will be a weight acting downward. This is your center of gravity, let us suppose G. Right? And definitely there will be a normal reaction which is uh, acting upward, passing through center of gravity. Fine. Technically, by using the Newton's uh, uh, principle, Newton's second law or Dilbert's principle, we can simply say the total vertical force equal to zero or we can simply say your uh, uh, the equilibrium condition, if I try to open the equilibrium condition, we can simply say the net weight equal to the normal reaction. Let us suppose, let us try to have assumption that this point G is making a virtual displacement. Let's say it has reached a new position, point as G dash. And this is the deflection happening, the displacement uh, by the center of gravity by a, a displacement, virtual displacement of dy. So I can say your dy is your virtual displacement, del y is your very small virtual displacement virtual displacement right now here we have to keep two things in mind one is 
you have to identify what is a virtual displacement due to uh, 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 by occurred by the body okay second is you have to see the direction of the force now that's the weight is acting downward so we always take the sign convention like this when the force is acting downward that is the negative y axis will be taking it as negative or it is moving in the negative x direction will be taken as negative if it's moving in the positive y axis will be taking that as positive if it is moving the positive x axis will be taken as positive so here w it is acting downward so we can say uh, what is the work done the virtual work done due to that w that will be equal to w minus w into del y because the work uh, the force is being acting downward right now if i talk about del y uh, 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 n right so n is acting upward so the work done due to this normal reaction will be n into del y and according to principle of virtual work your summation of all the work done will be equal to zero so minus w into delta y plus n into delta y equal to zero that means w equal to n and are we not getting the same equation when we are applying the equilibrium condition the weight is equal to normal reaction so this is basically the concept of virtual work a method or principle of virtual work you will be having a doubt sir this is so easy why will be applying this principle of virtual work in this particular question because we can directly apply the starting equilibrium and get the answers right and definitely i'll be always be preferring uh, uh, your equilibrium conditions to this kind of problem but let us suppose if we're having a situation something like this okay let us suppose there's a force f acting on this point okay and there's a p acting at the mid of this particular bar and they are saying for the body to be kept in equilibrium what should be the relation between p and f so technically if you try to apply uh, the equilibrium condition then you will be what to be doing you'll be having this as the uh, your fixed point you'll be having some reactions over here at this point right you'll be calculating that then you'll be applying the method of section or method of uh, your uh, this one uh, method of join and you will be uh, uh, calculating some unknown forces between the links and then you will be able to calculate the relation between p and f uh, it will basically take minimum one one and a half or even two pages if you try to go with that approach right but let us try to apply the principle of virtual work and i'll be telling you a step by step method how to apply okay procedure to apply the virtual work so what you do whenever you are having this kind of uh, question first of all identify the origin okay right uh, that origin you always like to, uh, it, it's better you take a fixed point as an origin right so here the fixed point is this let us uh, take this as origin if i'm taking this as origin now you i try to identify where the uh, force are acting so forces are acting at this point also this point also and this is the uh, your hinge point will be having reactions but technically uh, this is already a fixed point so reactions won't be able to move that hinge point right it will be won't be able to move the hinge point so we'll be having let us suppose i'm uh, uh, making this as point number one and this i'm calling this as point number two right now tell me one thing what will be the coordinate once you fix the origin now identify the coordinates of the point where the force are acting so if you see this point okay so this is l so from this point to this point will be l cos theta right and from this point to this point will be l cos theta so can we say the x coordinate of point 2 will be equal to 2l cos theta the point 2 coordinate is 2l cos why i'm saying this is 2l cos theta l cos theta plus l cos theta and why i'm not writing y2 because tell me one thing if i'm having if i'm having a body right and there's a force acting f in the uh, having an angle of theta and the displacement in this direction so the work done will be due to which force or work done will be equal to f cos theta into ds the work done will be only due to its uh, the component which is in the direction of the displacement okay which is in the direction of displacement if i try to calculate what is the work done due to this the, uh, the vertical component that is sine component so f sine theta will be making a uh, zero work done because the sine component and ds is making a uh, uh, your perpendicular direction we know that what is work done that is a dot product of force and displacement so that is f s cos theta okay fine so sine component is making a 90 degree with, with your uh, uh, displacement so technically that will be uh, uh, having a zero uh, uh, work done right so that is the reason whenever i'm applying the principle of virtual work over here i'm only considering the x coordinate of this because f will be creating the uh, deflection either in minus x or plus x that is 
uh, uh, irrelevant, right? Only we have to just identify the coordinate. Now, if I talk about point one, where the uh, force P is applied, so here we will be having the deflection only in the y direction. But definitely the work done will be calculated because P is vertically downward. So we only have to look for the uh, vertical coordinates, right? So here y two we need to, y one we need to calculate. So how we can calculate this is this height will be L sine theta. Right, this height will also be L sine theta. So technically, we can say this will be a two L sine theta, two L sine theta. Right. So we have identified the coordinates of point one and point two, the x and the y coordinates, because in the direction of the force we will be seeing. Now we have to calculate the virtual displacement. Now how we can calculate the virtual displacement? Because technically, if I try to make this slightly displaced, what will happen? It's very difficult to calculate. Let us suppose if we are making a, a small deflection like this. Right, so the entire body will be reaching over here. So this is your delta y1. Okay, and this entire body will be shifting either left or right, and will be having some deflection of delta x2. Right, so it's very difficult. What we do? We try to see this values. Okay, we try to see this value, and we try to differentiate this. That means if I write it over here, x2 is equal to 2l cos theta. Right. If you try to differentiate, that is del x2 is equal to minus 2l sin theta. So you have calculated the virtual displacement in the x direction due to this force f. Okay. If I say y1, y1 is equal to 2l sin theta. Differentiate uh, both sides. So del y1 is equal to 2l cos theta del theta. Okay. We'll be having del theta also one. Right. Del theta. Okay. So what we have identified. If you try to make, if you try to make a small deflection, that is del theta over here, due to that, we'll be having deflection in the x and the y coordinate, right? So now what will we do? Now let's apply the concept of the principle of virtual work. Okay, the principle of virtual. So we have identified the origin. We have find out the virtual. These are the virtual displacements. This x2 and del, uh, delta x2 and uh, del y1. These are the virtual displacements. Virtual displacement right so now what we do we have just need to calculate the total work done due to this uh, entire uh, forces will be equal to zero so we can say now try to understand p is acting downwards it is in the minus y direction we can simply say minus p into what will be the deflection that is delta y1 delta y1 is 2l cos theta del theta right Okay, now if I talk about f, f is also uh, acting in the minus x direction, so it will be minus plus of minus f into what is uh, the deflection that is delta x2, that is minus 2l sine theta del theta. This is equal to 0. So rearranging this equation, we'll be having minus p into 2l cos theta del theta is equal to minus, minus minus plus, uh, taking on the right hand side, this will be minus 2 into l sin theta del theta so del theta cancel out 2l cancel out so we are having the relation between p and f so f is equal to p by uh, tan theta so we have created the relation between p and f with angular position right so if i say if theta is equal to 30 degree we can easily calculate what's the relation between p and f in order to make this entire body to be in equilibrium Okay, this entire body will be in equilibrium the, and if the relation between P and F will be P by uh, tan theta will be equal to F. Okay, if they are, let us put they are giving what the theta value is equal to 30 degree, we can say F is equal to root 3P. If F is equal to root 3P and theta equal to 30, the entire system will be in a static equilibrium. Static equilibrium. Very easy, very easy. So if I try to apply this particular concept in this such a complicated situation and mark my word, this is basically the best method to apply in static equilibrium whenever you are having a complex uh, uh, your uh, diagram, right? Let us take one more example. Let us suppose we are having a, a frame, right? And we are having two forces acting. So here, what we'll be doing? The first step is identify the origin. This is the origin, the fixed point. Identify where the forces are acting. So we are forces acting at this point. Let's say this is point number one and this is point number two. The forces are acting in the x directions. We only need to consider the x coordinate. Okay. So if I'm taking this as the origin, so what will be the total length from this point to this point? This let us suppose I'm taking this as theta. So this will be a cos theta, a cos theta. So total will be 2a cos theta, right? For we can say the x1 will be equal to 2a cos theta, 
okay now if i talk about the coordinate of x2 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 will be equal to so a cos theta a cos theta a cos theta so we'll be having 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so we'll be having 6 a cos theta we have identified the coordinates now calculate the virtual displacement now calculate the virtual displacement so we can say delta x1 will be equal to minus 2 a sin theta del theta we have to just differentiate this equation okay both sides here also if i say delta x2 is equal to minus 6a sin theta del theta right so we have identified the these are the virtual displacements these are the virtual this is not actually happening right this is only the virtual is because we need to take the total summation of work done equal to zero but that is the concept of principle of virtual work okay so we'll be seeing on delta x1 delta x1 is basically due to this p1 force which is acting on the right hand side that means it will be plus p okay plus p into your delta x1 now here plus now uh, q is in the minus x direction so we'll be having minus q into delta x2 equal to zero placing all the values so we'll be having this as p into uh, minus 2a sin theta del theta uh, taking this on the right hand side this will be plus so uh, we'll be having q into minus 6a sin theta del theta cancelling del theta 6 this cancel this get cancelled this is 3 so ultimately we'll be having p is equal to 3q so if p is equal to 3q my entire system will be in static equilibrium that's it okay my entire system will be in static equilibrium that means if if your uh, uh, p is equal to three times of q the system will be in static equilibrium okay so this is all about the concept of virtual work do apply this uh, type of concept in the complex diagrams and try to enjoy this particular virtual work method okay so thank you guys for this particular uh, video uh, for this particular uh, concept you have enjoyed right please do watch till the end okay and for more such awesome con uh, content stay connected with our very beautiful platform that is by exam this is suraj kobi signing off take care stay safe thank you guys bye bye thank you